All right, this is the piston engine I'm going to be teaching how to make today. It is a very strong piston engine, strong enough to bend servos, and it has a very high RPM. And let's get right into it. So this is the engine. It spins quite fast. As you can see, the pistons travel up and down to twist the crankshaft, which then spins this, which is the sensor array, which tells the pistons when to fire and when not to. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make one today. So, first thing you want to do is you're going to get out your seat, of course, so that you can set controls to everything. And you're going to want to use any kind of floor that you want to place your engine on. So, first, you're going to start with a 2x4 block placed vertically right here. And then, we are going to place a helicopter engine, preferably a two-way one. And we're going to remove the key bindings from it. Then, once we remove the key bindings from it, we are going to paste and move it one block upward. So the way we're using the helicopter engines is we're using them as pass-through bearings. So the sides can be connected to, but they'll still transfer the rotational speed, if that makes sense. So here I can demonstrate when I spawn it in. Oops. Wait a minute. I have to add like a weight up here or something like that. You'll see that it still spin it falls, but it still allows it to be attached on the side which is very useful for what we're going to be doing. So once you have the helicopter engines like this, you're going to grab a piston. You could do one or two. It does not matter. And you're going to need a hinge or some kind of connection on the bottom that allows it to rotate freely on this axis like that. And you're going to want to set the strength to zero. The angle and the speed do not matter. And then you're going to add a servo right here. And the servo is going to be set to 90 degrees. And depending on how many cylinders you have, you're going to decrease the stopper. But for an inline four, we're going to go with 90 degrees. And then we are all we're going to do is we're going to copy this over a few times, four times actually. And we're going to delete that servo on the end, copy this side over to here. And we're nearly done. So now you're going to select all of your pistons. You're going to remove all controls from them. And you're going to set the speed to a negative 100. So in case you didn't already know, negative speeds are much faster than positive speeds. So negative 100 is about 10 times faster than normal 100 speed. And this is a very important step. You're going to want to set the starting position to 0 0.33 and turn on auto reset. All right, that is very important. So then once you've done that, you're going to put distance sensors like this on the side of it and you're going to want to set the range of all these distance sensors to 0 0.7 and because we've set the speed um, to the pistons to be negative we have to set the output to be negative so that they extend when we're telling them to makes sense good so once we get out this 2 by we're going to get out this 2 by 4 and we're going to get two wedge 2 by 2s like this and this is going to tell the set like it's going to and it's going to turn on the sensors so that they know when to trigger the pistons so now that you have this set up you're going to connect the distance sensors to the corresponding pistons you may have to mess with it a little bit but generally you just connect them like this and once you've done that, it will either work right away or it won't. I recommend putting an anchor pin on the bottom and making your platform very wide because the centrifugal force is quite strong. Um, so it looked like, oh, I forgot a very important step. So the servos that are um, offsetting the crankshaft need to be um, on. And you can make them constantly on by using a distance sensor set to zero distance, a uh, positive output scale and invert the trigger. So since the distance is zero and the trigger is inverted, it will always be on. So, and look at that. I have made a functioning piston engine and you can too. Now, there are quite a few different um, ways you can make use of these engines. This is a piston engine plane. It uses the exact same design that I showed you how to make, except there are two of them and they spin in opposite directions, which allows me to make a plane that can fly. Now, the only reason there are two of these engines and not just one is because of the uh, centrifugal force they produce. I need to have two so that it doesn't cause it to constantly spin like that. So, yeah. Piston engines are pretty sweet. And I love to see what you guys are going to be able to do with them. So, show me what you got. If you got any um, feedback, 
or questions to ask about how to make the piston engines work, I'll try my best to get back to you and help you out with it. And don't forget to leave um, comments about what kind of ideas you want me to help you make in Trail Makers. So, you know, piston glitches, hinge glitches, any kind of glitch, ask me anything. I have over a thousand numbers on the game.